Picture 30 Vikings crossing a thousand miles of brutal North Atlantic in a wooden boat barely 60 feet long. No GPS, no weather radar, no radio contact, just oak planks, iron nails, and sailing techniques that took them from Norway's fjords to North America 500 years before Columbus. How did they do it? The answer lies in shipbuilding techniques so ingenious that modern naval architects still study thousand-year-old Viking designs to improve today's ocean vessels. Clinker Hull Construction When you look at a modern fiberglass boat hull, you see a smooth, continuous surface designed for minimal water resistance. It's effective, but rigid. Hit a big wave wrong, and something cracks. The Vikings solved this problem 800 years before fiberglass existed, and their solution was so elegant that high-end racing boats still use modified versions today. The secret was clinker construction, overlapping planks that created hulls capable of flexing with ocean swells instead of fighting them. Instead of making boats rigid enough to resist ocean power, Viking shipbuilders made them flexible enough to work with it. Each plank overlapped the one below, creating hulls that could bend and twist without breaking. Modern sailors who've experienced North Atlantic storms talk about waves that snap steel ships in half. But Viking longships rode over these same waves like flexible snakes. The Vikings were so skilled that their boats could literally dance with the waves. The genius wasn't just overlapping design, it was the joining method. Vikings used iron rivets positioned to allow planks to move slightly while maintaining watertight integrity. Too tight meant rigid, brittle hulls. Too loose meant leaking. Archaeological evidence from ships like the Gokstad vessel shows precise rivet spacing demonstrating advanced stress distribution understanding. These were engineered solutions balancing flexibility with structural integrity. Vikings varied their clinker construction based on expected conditions. Coastal vessels had different overlap patterns than ocean-going ships. River navigation ships used different rivet spacing than open water vessels. They were custom engineering hulls for specific maritime conditions centuries before computer modeling. Wood selection was equally important. Oak was chosen not just for strength, but for grain patterns. Viking shipwrights read wood grain like engineers read stress diagrams, knowing exactly how each plank would behave under load and which pieces suited different hull sections. They developed seasoning techniques that brought oak to optimal moisture content, not too soft to deform permanently, not too brittle to crack. This preparation was crucial for achieving maximum flexibility. The result was hulls that handled conditions destroying rigid boats. Viking ships regularly survived storms that sank larger, more heavily built vessels. They could beach on rocky shores, flex over submerged obstacles, and handle constant ocean swell stress day after day, month after month. Keel Design Secrets the Viking longship keel wasn't just the boat's bottom, it was the engineered foundation making everything else possible. Viking keel construction reveals naval architecture, understanding that modern designers still admire and copy. Start with material selection. A Viking keel was cut from a single tree trunk, usually oak, but not just any oak tree. Shipwrights searched forests for trees with the right characteristics. Sufficient length, proper curve, and grain patterns providing maximum strength where needed most. The skill required to evaluate a standing tree and visualize how its trunk would perform as an ocean-going vessel's backbone was remarkable. These men could predict how it would handle wave stress, steering torque, and lateral wind forces. Keel shaping was equally important. Vikings didn't carve straight beams. They engineered curves and tapers that optimized performance. The bow section cut through waves efficiently. The stern provided stability and steering control. 
archaeological analysis shows something remarkable. These keels had carefully planned curves. They balance speed, stability, and seaworthiness in ways that still impress naval architects today. But Viking keels served multiple functions. They weren't just structural, they were also primary navigation tools. Keel depth and shape determined how ships tracked through water, responded to steering, and maintained directional control in shallow water. Viking ships famously operated in incredibly shallow water, sometimes less than three feet deep. This required engineering keels that provided steering control even in minimal depth, a balance modern shallow draft military vessels still struggle with. The attachment of the keel to the rest of the hull was another masterpiece of medieval engineering. The keel had to support the entire weight of the ship while handling enormous stress from waves and steering forces. Vikings developed joining techniques that distributed these loads across multiple structural elements, creating connections that could handle decades of ocean use. They also engineered the keel-to-hull connection to be repairable. Ocean expeditions might last months or even years, and damage was inevitable. Viking keels were designed so that damaged sections could be repaired or even replaced using tools and materials available in remote locations. This modularity was crucial for long-range exploration. The steering integration was particularly clever. The Viking steering oar attached to the keel structure in a way that transferred steering loads directly to the ship's backbone. This wasn't just mechanically efficient, it gave the helmsman direct feel for how the ship was responding to water conditions. Modern racing sailors pay thousands of dollars for steering systems that provide the kind of direct feedback that Viking helmsmen got as standard equipment. But how did they make these heavy wooden ships so incredibly versatile? Oar Port Innovation When Vikings designed oar ports, the openings where oars extended through the hull, they weren't just solving how to row a boat. They were creating an integrated system that served multiple functions with an elegance that modern boat designers still study. The basic challenge seems simple. Cut holes in your boat for oars. But anyone who's tried this discovers the problems. Holes in boat hulls leak. They create weak points. They need perfect positioning for efficient rowing. And, somehow, they need sealing when not in use to prevent flooding in rough seas. Vikings solved all these problems with remarkable elegance. Their oar ports weren't just holes. They were engineered openings that could be sealed, that strengthened rather than weakened the hull, and that actually improved ship performance in multiple ways. The positioning of oar ports reveals sophisticated understanding of rowing mechanics and human physiology. Each port was placed at exactly the right height and angle to allow efficient oar strokes while maintaining the rower's comfort during long journeys. Archaeological measurements show that Viking oar port spacing accommodated different body sizes and rowing styles, suggesting they understood that crew efficiency was crucial for long-distance travel. But here's where Viking innovation really shows. They realized that oar ports could serve as ventilation systems. During ocean voyages, keeping the ship's interior dry and breathable was a constant challenge. Viking oar ports were designed so that when oars weren't in use, the openings provided controlled ventilation. Air moved through the ship without letting water enter. The sealing mechanism was particularly clever. Vikings developed removable plugs that sealed oar ports completely when rowing wasn't needed. These weren't simple cork stoppers. They were engineered seals that handled wave pressure while being quickly removable when rowing was required. The structural integration was equally impressive. Instead of simply cutting holes through hull planks, Vikings designed oar ports that actually reinforced the hull structure. The edges of each port were reinforced with additional wood and ironwork that distributed stress around the opening. In some cases, 
the Orport reinforcements became structural elements that strengthened the entire hull section. Viking shipwrights also understood that ore ports needed to handle different conditions. Coastal rowing required different port characteristics than ocean rowing. River navigation demanded different sealing capabilities than open water use. They developed standardized but adaptable ore port designs that could be modified for specific voyage requirements. The maintenance aspect was equally thoughtful. Ore ports were high wear areas that needed regular attention during long voyages. Vikings designed them to be repairable using shipboard tools and materials. The reinforcement methods and sealing systems could be maintained or rebuilt without major shipyard facilities. The next innovation completely changed how Vikings explored the world. Shallow draft engineering. Perhaps no aspect of Viking ship design was more revolutionary than their mastery of shallow draft engineering. These ships could navigate rivers barely deep enough to float a modern canoe, then handle ocean storms that would challenge much larger vessels. This versatility was the key to Viking expansion across Europe and beyond. The engineering challenge was enormous. Deep draft provides stability and directional control in ocean conditions. Shallow draft allows river navigation and beach landing capability. These requirements seem contradictory, but Vikings found ways to optimize both in the same vessel. The hull shape was the primary innovation. Instead of deep, narrow hulls favored by most ocean-going vessels, Vikings developed wide, shallow hull forms. These distributed the ship's weight over a larger area. A fully loaded longship could operate in water depths that would ground conventional boats. But maintaining stability in shallow, wide hulls required understanding of balance and buoyancy principles. Vikings achieved this through careful weight distribution and hull shapes that provided stability through form rather than depth. The keel design we discussed earlier was crucial to shallow draft success. Viking keels were proportionally much shallower than those of comparable ocean-going vessels, yet they still provided adequate directional control. They achieved this through efficient keel shapes and strategic use of steering oars that could provide additional directional control when needed. Beach landing capability was integrated into every aspect of shallow draft design. Vikings needed ships that could be driven directly onto beaches for rapid loading and unloading. This required hulls strong enough to handle grounding, flexible enough to ride over obstacles, and shaped to slide easily up onto shore. The bow design was particularly important for beach operations. Viking ships had pronounced upward curves at both bow and stern that allowed them to ride up onto beaches without getting stuck. The hull shape distributed grounding loads across the entire bottom structure rather than concentrating stress at specific points. River navigation presented unique challenges that Vikings solved through ingenious design details. Rivers have variable depths, sudden obstacles, and current patterns that require different handling characteristics than ocean sailing. Viking hulls were designed to handle all these conditions without compromising ocean-going capability. The steering system had to work effectively in both deep and shallow water. Viking steering oars were proportioned and positioned to provide control even when the keel was barely touching bottom. This was crucial for river navigation, where precise maneuvering was often required in minimal water depth. Load carrying capability couldn't be sacrificed for shallow draft. Vikings needed to transport men, weapons, supplies, and trade goods over long distances. Their shallow draft designs maintained surprising cargo capacity through efficient hull forms and intelligent weight distribution systems. You won't believe what they use to keep water out. Weather sealing techniques. Keeping water out of a wooden boat that's constantly flexing in ocean swells was one of the greatest challenges Viking shipbuilders faced. Their solutions were so effective that some thousand-year-old ships still show evidence of their 
original waterproofing systems. The primary sealing material was tar, but not just any tar. Vikings developed specific tar formulations that remained flexible in cold weather and didn't become brittle with age. Pine tar was the foundation modified with animal fat for cold weather flexibility and beeswax for water resistance. Wool played a crucial role in Viking sealing systems. Specially prepared wool was treated with tar and used to stuff gaps between planks before final sealing. This created a flexible, waterproof gasket system that could handle the constant movement of clinker-built hulls. Here's something amazing. Some Viking ships found buried for a thousand years still had their original wool intact. The legacy that still sails today. The techniques we've explored weren't just historical curiosities. They were hard-won solutions to real engineering challenges that modern boat designers still face. Every principle Vikings mastered through centuries of ocean experience remains relevant today. Modern racing yacht design shows clear Viking influence. The flexible hull concepts that allow today's racing boats to handle extreme conditions trace back to Viking clinker construction principles. Military vessels adopt Viking shallow draft concepts for boats operating in rivers and coastal waters. Expedition boats use modular construction techniques that echo Viking portable shipbuilding approaches. But perhaps most importantly, Viking shipbuilding represents an approach to engineering that we can still learn from today. They solved complex problems using available materials, hand tools, and knowledge passed down through generations. They optimized designs through real-world testing under the most demanding conditions imaginable. The Vikings proved that sophisticated engineering doesn't require sophisticated tools. It requires understanding of materials, physics, and the specific challenges your designs will face. They showed that the best solutions often work with natural forces rather than fighting them. Every time you see a modern boat that handles both rivers and oceans, that flexes with waves instead of fighting them, that can be repaired using standard parts. You're seeing Viking innovation that has survived a thousand years because it simply works. Their wooden ships carried them farther than anyone thought possible. They did it using techniques so effective that we're still copying them today. The next time you see a boat cutting through waves, remember, the Vikings were doing this a thousand years ago. Here's my question for you. If you were a Viking shipbuilder, would you focus on building the fastest long ship possible or the most versatile one that could handle any conditions? And what would you choose? The flexible hull that dances with waves or the shallow draft design that opens up every river and coastline? Drop your choice in the comments and tell us why.